Rella 2 to the Poisk airlock with the Jettison Bundle. Dimitri stows the Jettison Bundle on Strela 1 while Sergei retrieves a cable for the airlock and new Luka module connections. Once equipment stowage and retrieval is complete, crew will use Strela 1 to translate Station Nader to the new Luka module. They'll set up at the airlock install worksite and coordinate with Ira to berth the airlock to Zarya. EV-1 and EV-2 will retrieve the cable and mate the connections from the new airlock to the Zarya panel. Once complete, they'll translate back to the Poisk airlock via Strela-1. Dimitri will retrieve the Jettison Bundle and ingress the Operator's Post of Strela-1. Dimitri will then jettison the bundle stationed aft. Crew will meet back up at the Poisk airlock where they'll perform a tool inventory, inspect each other's suits, ingress, and close the hatch. Ending Russian EVA 57. We're back now with live views of the Poisk module on the International Space Station. Depressurization is complete. They're doing a final leak check on their Orlin spacesuits just to make sure everything is good before they get out the door. And then they'll open the hatch, which will mark the official start time of the spacewalk today. While we are doing leak check, you can prepare step 11 for preparing suits for standalone mode. Yes, I do have the page open. We have four minutes already. What's the current pressure? Ten millimeters.
The spacewalkers are two minutes into their five minute planned leak check. Uh, we're back with views of we're back with views of Mission Control Moscow. So when we're talking about a US spacewalk, we have two types of people who can talk to the crew. We have our Capcom who speaks to the astronauts inside of the International Space Station. And we have our ground IV. That's the person that talks to the actual spacewalkers while they're outside of the space station. It's two different roles. It could get confusing who you're talking to. So we have two different positions. This is the case for Mission Control Moscow too, which we're getting the balcony of view now. Uh, they'll be speaking in Russian. So you're gonna be hearing the female voice of the translator translating Russian to English so that we can understand. And they'll be speaking to the crew. Meanwhile, here in Mission Control Houston, we have team monitoring the crew both inside the space station. It is their sleep period now, but we also have a dedicated team to monitoring the spacewalk. We have spacewalkers officers there in the back, and we also have our flight director, Adi Bulos, today. Copy, then moving to six. That's Adi now in the white shirt with the tie. Preliminary setup. And checking pressure, point 0.38 on the 7.38. Uh, now uh, moving to uh, autonomous power in reverse order. Uh, that is... Uh, uh, power uh, pump and fan uh, power to stand alone in our activation again of the pump fan and uh, transmitter okay that's okay the second one is on the standalone power and we do have the backup pump and fan on and the prime transmitters are activated for both. It is correct. So 1950 is that time. And O2 is uh, 412 and 401 on the second and first. And the voltage on the second, 30.29. Looks like we had a successful leak check. Right now, the International Space Station is in an orbital nighttime as the space station travels from west to east over the southern tip of Africa. from both. So it is off, uh, LED is off, removing power. And the second one is off, and the first one is off. Now, Demating electrical umbilicals. Demated. Oh, too close. And the second. The spacewalkers are going through their final checklist as they get ready to open the hatch. So, demating the electrical umbilical. Now put in the cap. So the first one is uh, demated on the first and the second one for fluid umbilicals and the storage caps installed. Uh, 
Так, у кого открываем бурзагушки. The Russian Orlan suits are on battery power. Remember, this is different from a U.S. spacewalk. This might signify the, the start of a U.S. spacewalk. But in this particular case, this is a Russian spacewalk, so the start time of the spacewalk will happen when the hatch opens. installed. In process. The first one, umbilical is off, and the cap is on, and uh, checking O2 closed. This is O2 closed. Zero three seven and zero three six. That is norm for the car and the pressure is greater than three sixty for twelve and a second uh elliptic valves closed. And now waiting for your go to open. Yes, Artyom will be your next lead. So good luck with EVA and uh, we'll meet you again in the airlock. Thank you. Сергей, hello. Hello, Artyom. Good day. We have a lot of interesting events today. Moving the airlock. Let's start the routine of opening the hatch. As usual, tell me, first of all, all the tools, uh, everything in MRM, from MRM to everything is tethered, secured in place, yes. And the suits are also tethered. Yes. Long, long tether, yes. One, one long tether, yes. We're standing by for the opening of the hatch on the Poisk module, where two spacewalkers will emerge. They're confirming now that their tether configuration is correct and that their tool bag is packed and ready. And uh, the indicator is in place uh, facing the mark on the handle. That's true. Position closed. And the protective ring is also in place. Yes. Uh, let's start opening the easy hatch. All right, very good. Sergey, hold it there. Okay. Installing warm cold switch and so four screws are out.
the clutch is operating. Let us know uh, when the hatch starts opening. in place, the pusher. Copy. Uh, some resistance still. Holding a little bit. We'll try to open. So opening now. So the okay, we start the EVA time now. Copy. Holding on. Okay, I'm turning now. Tightening up. Copy. And the hatch is open, signifying the beginning of today's spacewalk to relocate an experiment airlock from Rosviet to the Nyoka module. The beginning of the spacewalk started as the International Space Station was flying over the northeast edge of South Sudan in an orbital nighttime. Soon we'll see the door fly open and our spacewalkers can begin to come out. Opened. The tabs are in the activated position. Copy. Installing. And remember, make sure that the ties do not get in the way. The official t start time of today's spacewalk is 3 p.m. Central Time, 4 p.m. Eastern, with cosmonauts Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin. Getting ready to get out the door, the hatch is open. Let's see if it closes the gap. Looks like it does not. No, it doesn't. Just like this. It doesn't quite reach. Okay, let's try this. Okay, that's much better. Make sure that the indicators match. Okay. Maybe we'll turn it through. Let's try that, 180. A little bit more.
Gators matched up. Yes, we're pushing it in. Into the groove. Yes, on my side as well. Okay, the protective ring is installed. Okay, let's step into egressing. Egressing is another name for exiting the International Space Station. Uh, Dmitry Patelin is in the suit with the blue stripes. He's our EV-2 today, and he'll be the first one out the door. We're in a momentary handoff between our communications satellites and are now getting live views of Mission Control Moscow. Tether goes outside. The cable bundle is tethered to me. Okay, my adjustable tether. Crew bag, crew lock bag is also tethered to me. Repeat that, please. EV-1 has the crew lock bag tethered. Okay, copy. We're back with our live views of the Poisk airlock that our spacewalkers are working to get out of today or ingressing. You can see some movement down by the red words as our EV-2 is the first one out the door. Adjustable tether is out. And I am egressing. Okay, I've egressed. It's a dark view as the International Space Station is in an orbital nighttime, but if you look to the right, of the airlock right at the center of your screen you will begin to see our spacewalkers exit the hatch or egress as you may hear it referred to during our coverage today those red words are the upside down Cyrillic on Russian it says the Poisk airlock Dmitry Sergei on your go when ready you're go to deactivate the sublimators Activating sublimators. I have activated the sublimator. Indicator is on. That was for EV-1. Okay, copy. I'm going to the edge. And I'm going to... Now I'm also working with the sublimator. EV2 sublimator is activated. Okay, copy, thank you. 
Сергей Дмитрий, when the cooling begins, put the heat handle to zero and the third tumbler activated. That's for the second toggle switch once you feel the cold. Okay, copy. Exiting the hatch is the first step in our spacewalk here today. We've got a number of busy tasks throughout the six and a half hour estimated uh, total runtime of our spacewalk today. Um, but first, they're not going to head out to the to the work site quite yet. Their overall goal is to move the experiment airlock over from Rosviet over to the Nauka module. But first, as soon as they get out the hatch, they need to configure their spacesuits, perhaps do some buddy checks, look at their partner's spacesuit, make sure that everything is working well. And then they need to work on the hatch itself. They have to install a protective ring. It's a seal on the poise catch to protect it from any debris while the hatch is open. On the Quest airlock, where we do the U.S. spacewalks, there's a similar protection in place, uh, but instead of a protective ring, Quest has a hatch cover over on the U.S. side. Uh, they'll also need to get their tethers and tool bag configured before they take off towards their work site. On EV2, temperature control handle to 6, then pull off and 3. And activating ISTR in cold. EV1 is tethered outside. Copy, Sergey. ISTR is active on EV2. EV1 is out. Copy, Dmitri. I am outside. I am by the GS Dam Strela One. So our spacewalkers today are cosmonauts Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin. Let's take a look at some quick facts about them. Prokopiev is the commander of the International Space Station. This is his fifth spacewalk of his career, having previously spent 29 hours, 51 minutes outside of the space station over the course of his four previous spacewalks. Patelin is on his third spacewalk today, having spent 14 hours, 20 minutes suited up in the vacuum of space over the course of two spacewalks. This is the 262nd spacewalk in support of spacewalk of in support of space station assembly, maintenance and upgrades, the fifth spacewalk of 2023 and the third spacewalk for expedition 69. You can see that Prokopiev has the red stripes on his spacesuit. He's our EV1 and Patelin is in the suit with the blue stripes, our EV2 and the first one out the door today. Echo has been activated on EV2. Erka is also activated. LED is on. Copy. Same for me. Hekka and Erka are activated. Okay, the KPU and the Krulag bag are tethered. We are ready to translate towards MRM-1. Not quite. 
Like we talked about a little bit earlier, before they can head out to their work sites, they need to configure their spacesuits. Uh, they need to make sure that they're comfortable during over the course of their approximately six hour, 30 minute spacewalk. Uh, they also are gonna do some buddy checks and make sure that their HECA cameras are on or uh, cameras that are mounted onto their helmets that allow us to see from their point of view. Uh, we expect Prokopiev, you may see the number 16 burned into the video when we're getting his point of view and Patelin will have number 22. So you've decided to translate via the, the faster, shorter path through the operator post? Yes. Across the operator post. Handrail 64. Just make sure you follow the tethering protocol. You should have the short tether in front of you. And And that boom is not operating, so you can just watch for it. And here comes the sun. And you can see it on your screen too, as they said, here comes the sun. The International Space Station is moving into an orbital daytime. The spacewalkers are now working to move over to their work site on the Rosviet module. Um, in their procedures, they're going to use the Strela 2 boom. Strela means arrow in Russian. It's a telescoping pole that crew can use to move around. Uh, to give you a better picture of what I mean by telescoping, uh, think of a bicycle seat. It can extend up and down if you need to adjust it, but most of the time it's locked into place. That's kind of how Strela 2 operates. Uh, Strela 1 is on the Poist module as well. They'll use the boom to travel along its path to get to the Zarya module, then carry on to the Rosviet module where the experiment airlock is. Uh, it looks like there was some chatter about possibly another path that they could take over there too.
Сергей, я не копирую. Температура была высокая на первом сюде. Окей, копирую. Это как в другой раз. Да, так что Сергей, ты немного прошел грапплю текстуру. Да. So I have a recommendation for you. When you tether to 60-34, turn your head towards the docking interface. And then you can go under the BVP boom. Okay, yes. That's the CV2. Дмитрий, я говорю тебе, просто turn with your feet up. Okay, and I'm pretty much here already. Yes. 